Okay, guys, what I, what I want to do right now is uh, spend a few minutes, uh, first of all, at the very beginning, reviewing, it's been, it's been a little while, reviewing um, some of the concepts that we've discussed previously. Uh, we had two big concepts about uh, angular motion, rotational motion that we've already discussed, so I want to go over those very quickly. Then I'm going to introduce one third new idea that will be very short as well, and then we'll... Um, and then uh, what I want to wrap up with is um, I'm going to explain the contents of a short mini quiz that you're going to have in class next time. Um, it's a really short, straight, should be a short, straightforward mini quiz. So I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll explain what that's going to be all about in a minute. So first of all, um, let's start by reviewing what we've already discussed with rotational motion. This is, a, this is our... Um, our topic that we're dealing with right now. And uh, we started off, first of all, the very first thing we did was um, think about how you measure something that's moving in a circle. Um, and we discussed that there are a few different ways that you might do that. You could measure a circle, you could split circles up into like 360 degrees, for instance. Or you could talk about revolutions, how many times around did you go. Um, these two methods turn out not to be that useful in physics because they have no real, as I mentioned, no real geometric meaning. So we decided to use radians as our measure. So we're going to be using radians as we've discussed all throughout this unit. And I spent a little bit of time talking about radians. Uh, and, and radian measure, again, the, the physical meaning is a, a circle, uh, this, the circumference of a circle, the the distance around the perimeter of the circle, um, there's a relationship between that circumference and the radius of the circle, and that is that the circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius of the circle. And so the, the essence of radians is that one full circle, one full turn, one, rotate, one revolution, one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. So we discussed that at the very start. And that's sort of the backbone for how we're going to measure rotational motion. And then we talked about two different ways of measuring rotational motion. The, the first, the simplest, was to discuss angular displacement. If you've turned, you might want to know how much have you turned. So that's angular displacement, which is delta theta. This is the Greek letter theta, remember. And this means just how much has the object turned. Um, so if you, you you could measure this in degrees, you could measure it in revolutions, or you could measure it in radians. We're going to use radians, that's our unit, um, but you could use any of the others. Right? I could say that I, um, I spun around three times. If I say I spun around three times, that's a delta theta. I've told you how much I turned. Um, in terms of radians, I spun around three times means three times two pi radians, which is then six pi radians. So we, we, we want to stick with radians, but uh, delta theta, we've done a little bit of practice with this, and delta theta is equal to S over R, where S is arc length. So again, this gets to the, the, the point that radian measure has a geometric meaning. So if I turn, right, if I go from like here, if I turn from here to there, right, if I turn that much, if the, whatever this is, if this thing's turning that much right there, then there's a, this angle, right here, this is, this is my delta theta. There's a relationship between that angle and this distance, this physical distance. This is the arc length right here. That's S. And the radius, R. And that is that this number of radians that I've turned, whatever that is, is equal to this physical distance here divided by that physical distance there. Um, so that was the definition of delta theta. Uh, again, here the units are radians, which we, we abbreviate radians RAD. All right, the second thing then, the second way of describing an object that's moving in a circle is you, you might want to know, first of all, how far it's turned, but you also might want to know how fast is it turning. Is it spinning really, really quick, or is it spinning slowly? And the rate at which the thing is spinning is given by the Greek letter omega, which looks very much like a W. This is omega right here. So um, common unit for omega uh, in everyday life, you're, you're familiar with RPMs probably, revolutions per minute. 
revolutions per minute, the number of times it goes around in a minute. That's not the unit we're going to use. We're going to use for our unit here, it's going to be radians per second because we always want to be in radians. Um, but the, the speed here, the angular speed is delta theta, the amount of turning that's gone on, how much turning has occurred, divided by t, the time. And again, the unit here that we're going to be using is radians per second. Radians per second. So we've already discussed these two different ways of measuring circular motion. How much has it turned? How fast has it turned? How fast is it turning? Um, I mentioned this in class before, but you might have picked up on a little bit of a pattern here, which is that uh, the very beginning of the year, the very first thing we did was talk about linear displacement delta x. Linear displacement. Well, now we started off with angular displacement delta theta. At the beginning of the year, the second thing we discussed was linear speed or linear velocity, v. Second thing we discussed here was angular velocity or angular speed, omega. Well, here's the pattern. The, very, the third thing we discussed at the very, very beginning of the year was acceleration, linear acceleration. And the, very, the third thing that we're going to discuss now is angular acceleration, which is abbreviated with the Greek letter alpha. That's alpha. Looks a little bit like a fish. And this is angular acceleration. Okay, so write that down here. This is angular acceleration. And this is uh, angular acceleration occurs if something is spinning and the, the, the speed that it's spinning at changes. So maybe it starts spinning faster and faster and faster. It's turning faster and faster and faster. Or it's slowing down. It's turning slower and slower and slower. Um, so for instance, on, on, on my, if I'm riding my bike, if I speed up, then if speeding up, I'm speeding up because the tires are going around faster and faster and faster. That's an angular acceleration. So um, the uh, angular acceleration is the change in the angular speed, the change in the speed, the change in the turning speed, omega, divided by the time. And that's our, the, that's our new little equation here. One new sort of concept that I wanted to introduce. And remember this here, this is the Greek letter alpha. Alpha. And it is analogous to acceleration, linear acceleration A. So delta x is analogous to delta theta. Displacement, angular displacement. V is analogous to omega, linear speed, angular speed. A is analogous to alpha, angular acceleration, or linear acceleration, angular acceleration. So um, we can see that there, this is sort of this parallels very much what we did at the beginning of the year back in September. So these are the three basic ways of measuring rotational motion that we're going to discuss: displacement, velocity, acceleration. Um, we're going to use, we're going to put these different quantities into a whole bunch of equations next class. But before we do that, it's really, really important before we move forward that you are, you guys are all confident with what these symbols mean. Um, it's very important that we do that. So at the beginning of next class, we're going to have a short quiz. Uh, there's uh, no need to, to fret, no need to stress out too much. This is going to be really straightforward. I'm about to tell you exactly what the quiz is going to ask you to do so that you should all get a perfect score if you've watched this video. Um, so I want you to be familiar with these three different symbols. So what am I going to ask you to do? I'm going to ask you to do three things. For the three different quantities that we've discussed, for delta theta, omega, and alpha, the first thing I want you to know, what are the names for these? In other words, wh what, do we, what do we call that? Right? I've been using this phrase, but you need to know this word, you need to know that that is theta. This Greek letter is theta. So that when I say delta theta, you know I'm talking about that symbol, the circle with the line through it. When I say omega, you need to know that I'm talking about the little w. That's, that's important. And when I you do the little fish thing here, you need to know that that's alpha. Okay, so that's the first piece of information that you're going to be required to to produce. Can you write for me, first of all, number one, can you write for me the Greek name of these, or the, the name for these three Greek letters? Can you do that? 
then I want you to tell me, okay, well, what do they mean? What, what does theta mean? Delta theta means angular displacement. Omega is angular speed. And alpha, as we've indicated, is angular acceleration. Okay? So that's the second thing I'm going to ask you to produce. Second piece of information you need to know. Third, units. What are the units that we're going to use for these? Well, delta theta, we're going to use for our units. That's going to be radians. Omega is radians, radians per second. And alpha, that's radians per second squared. Okay, so three pieces of information. Um, I'm going to ask you to, to, I'm going to give you these three symbols, and I'm going to ask you to name, okay, what, what are the names of the Greek letters? What's the name of the physical quantity? And what is the name of the unit? So this is the name of the letter. So this, these are the Greek letters. These are the, these are what we call, these are the physical quantities. And these are the units. Okay. So, um, very straightforward, you're going to get on the quiz. If you know what's on this, this page right here, you should get a 100 on the quiz. So, um, make, sure that you, uh, make sure that you pay attention to that and, and write it down and, and, and commit it to memory. Like, the reason I'm doing this, again, moving forward, we're going to have a whole bunch of equations that use these three symbols. And it's really important that you know, if I write one of these symbols, that you know what the symbol means. Otherwise, you're going to run into a lot of problems moving forward. So, um, uh, Study this up and uh, we'll begin class tomorrow with a little mini quiz. See you then.